Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is June, June 28th of 2017. And this is going to be one of my story time videos. I'm not sure how many I've made, not very many. I, I set up a playlist and I did a few videos. I'm not sure how many. Well, we could find out, couldn't we? Let's just do this here and see. YouTube. And click on here. Go to my Creator Studio. Go to Video Manager. Go to Playlist. Politics, 10 with Jim, show me video, story time. There are 12 videos there, I'm surprised. Well, this is going to be number 13, uh-oh. In the United States, number 13 is unlucky. Uh, I hope I'm not getting senile or getting dementia or Alzheimer's. My mother had Alzheimer's. Sometimes, and I, I'm not sure why, maybe sometimes it's something in the news or something, but something pops up from the old days and I actually get upset about it. I, I don't think anything ever pops up that I go, oh wow, that was great, what a wonderful, it's always something that pops up and I get pissed off and it's something that now this thing I'm pissed that I was that popped up for some reason and I was pissed off then big time and when it popped up I'm still be pissed off about it but some of the things that pop up things that happened a long time ago they were just little things that were you know over but this is something that stuck with me maybe because there was no real resolution to it um, Uh, I let me say first that um, this is going to be about a police department. Well, not the police department so much as a police officer in the department. I uh, worked hospital security for thirty years, and early on, I worked a, a part-time contract security jobs. It varied. I worked for Pinkerton one entire year part-time and saved all that money and took the wife and kids and we drove down to Mexico and drove through Mexico. Uh, and then I worked for I worked for them another I quit them and then I came back and worked another I worked for other uh, companies like that as a part-time job. So uh, I pulled up Jaws because uh, in 1975 I was working part-time security at the Oak Park Mall in Kansas and uh, the mall had contract security around the clock and I worked Saturdays and Sundays during the daytime. They, they got me to work a couple, a few nights. You know, I never felt really, I never felt frightened about my jobs that I, that I did. I mean, sometimes when you have somebody screaming and people yelling or whatever, yeah, your adrenaline and you heightened, you know, but the first night that I had, that I worked all night at that mall, that was kind of spooky. Gigantic shopping mall. I was the only security officer there at night. And you have all these places and they have mannequins at the doors or inside. And the air conditioning kicks on. And their clothing moves or something. And I, as I was patrolling that night, I felt like, oh, this is kind of scary, you know. 
but uh, anyway, I, my assignment there was really daytimes, 12-hour shifts, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, on Saturday and Sunday, they had off-duty, two off-duty uh, Overland Park police officers. And I, I remember when I was working in the mall, Jaws came out because I didn't really know anything about, you know, but uh, people were coming out after watching Jaws. Uh, what would you call it? In shock. And that was, I stood there and watched these people coming out. So that's why I remember it. So it was 1975. Uh, so I was working there and I liked the way that mall, I'm not sure how it's still set up or whatever, but at that time they had a food court, but they had eating places also were, so I could make my round and I was inside, I was supposed to be inside, and make my rounds and I could go down and, of course I paid for my food, you know, but uh, I'm sure the police officers probably got some of their food, if not all of it, free. But anyway, uh, I um, I could get some French fries and a Coke or something, and then walk down and then down to the other end and get me a chili dog or something and a Coke and stand over and watch an exit or do something. I thought that's really nice. I like being in here. And it was a really really hot summer. It was summer, and it was hot, but I was inside. Uh, there were two police officers, and they went in and watched Jaws, I know that, together. And they were not, uh, I was like a nothing to them, you know. And But anyway, uh, things in the parking lot, the cars started getting broken into and stuff like that. So, now of course I was armed, uh, but I mean they were police officers for that city and uh, they told me to go out and patrol the parking lot, that I was to be outside patrolling the park. So I went from that nice inside duty uh, and they sent me out. Um, so I was outside in the parking lot for the rest of the summer, but uh, but you know, so those guys, you know, they didn't they didn't berate me or humiliate me or anything else. But they they weren't nice to me. I mean, they weren't bad to me. So they're. But when I was out there, I saw the police that were patrolling. You know, the on duty officers came through and I saw an Overland Park police officer uh, change a tire for a person out in the parking lot and do so and I was impressed with him. Okay. Um, so later, years later, I'm not working part-time security in a place, just working my full-time job. Um, my oldest daughter, uh, her first job, I believe it, well, not, I, well she did like other uh, young people. Uh, she worked fast food, you know, when she was going to, going to college and uh, I think maybe even high school. She worked some uh, fast food places and things like that and then she graduated from college. But uh, this is significant that I tell you, I think. Uh, she looked very young, still does, and uh, small, non-threatening, I mean you could just, there's some people you can just look at and that's a nice person. And that's somebody you'd look at, you know, people would look at and think, oh, that, you know, that could be my sister, that could be my daughter, 
Um, and she got the job of being in charge of the Kansas City office of Greenpeace. Let's see, I don't think Greenpeace has a very good, that's not it. They don't have a very good page, Greenpeace. And I was a Greenpeace fan, of course. I guess I wasn't until my daughter went to work and I learned about him, you know. She was in charge of the Kansas City office of Greenpeace. And so they had things that they did and she took the crew out to areas and they would go door to door uh, telling people about Greenpeace they would, uh, if there was legislation in the le state legislature or the uh, federal, you know, in, for, before Congress or whatever, they would have some papers and say, please, could you write to your congressman about this or could you vote for this when you, when you vote? And then if you, would you like to make a donation to, you know, to Greenpeace? I'm not sure they even asked him. I just left a, uh, a, a paper, you know, about Greenpeace. So that's what they did. They moved to different area, you know, and she was in charge. She ran the office. Uh, do I want to bring up this or not? Well, okay, I will. For over 30 years, I you know, carried a firearm when I was on duty. I was required to, of course. And when I came home from work every day, I unloaded my weapon and locked it in a strong box. And then I put the ammunition in a different location. I did that religiously every day, even when I didn't have minor children living with me, even when I didn't have anybody living with me. I still did that for safety purposes. So um, anyway, my daughter took her Greenpeace crew out to Overland Park, Kansas. And uh, I don't know how many of these cities you see now. It used to be you drive, I don't, and I might be just that this was a, well, this ordinance here, the Green River Ordinance, it says here was uh, started in 1931 in Green River, Wyoming. And other cities, copied this and even I guess called it the Green River Ordinance because you'd be driving around, I can remember driving around through Missouri and Kansas and maybe other areas and you're coming up to a town and you see a sign that says uh, Green River Ordinance Enforced. So Overland Park, uh, big, it's a big city. Uh, I actually, for one of the contract security companies that I worked for, they had, uh, I was a patrol officer for them, and they actually had me, man, this company, they had me covering all of Overland Park, Kansas, all the accounts that they had, and it's a big city, and I had to check every car dealer on Metcalf except for one check their doors or what have you. I mean, they had me running. I mean, it was just unbelievable This that this uh, contract guard agency, watchman service, would have one person covering something like this. So I patrolled all of, and then uh, I had to run out to Olathe, Kansas to check a couple businesses that they had out there. Uh, but 
so when I did that, when I was doing that, I had a lot of contact with uh, the Overland Park Police Department, and the officers were fantastic. They were really great. They were nice. Uh, no problems at all. A point I'm getting at is you always have an asshole, right, in a department or your business. And Overland Park had one. I'd kind of like to know what happened to him. I mean, I'm not a vindictive person. I'd kind of like to know that that somehow <sighs> that there is a justice in the world. So anyway. Overland Park, Kansas had the Green River Ordinance. Now I guess, uh, oh, the Green River Ordinance says that uh, you can't go door to door soliciting in that town because they have a Green River Ordinance in, in effect. Now, this, this is not it. I think that's it. The court case has been tested, I think, in 1930, 31, I believe, and it's been, or was it 33? It's been tested after that. Uh, the city a city or a state, if it were a state, cannot prohibit people going door to door for religious purposes as much as we probably would not like to have the Jehovah's Witnesses coming to our door or Scientology or whatever as much as you. Now you can put a sign yourself you can put a sign at your door or on your lawn and say no trespassing, no soliciting. That's okay. That's fine. You can you can do that. But a in this case, a city cannot put a sign that prohibits somebody for religious purposes coming to your door unless you have a sign that says you know no trespassing, no you know. And they also cannot prevent a course for political purposes, somebody coming from, you know, coming to your door, unless you have a personal sign. The city or the state cannot say, uh, you can't go to uh, people's homes and pass out uh, political literature. Uh, you can't go uh, door to door in a city and uh, pass out uh, Donald Trump information. You cannot go door to door and pass out uh, Americans for Democratic action. Uh, you know, you can't. Of course, nobody would. Uh, surely, no. Well, some state legislatures. My God, they're so fucking stupid. Somebody might try to, you know, pass that. Well, the Democrats are not allowed to come to this. You know down and pass out literature, but of course uh, they don't, you know, you can't, it's generalized, you know, you can't go door to door. Uh, but it's, this has already been decided by the Supreme Court of the United States. You cannot, a state, or else take, let's keep it with the city ordinance, you know, you cannot prevent somebody from going door to door and for religious purposes or for political purposes. Now you can uh, have a sign like that for the Green River Ordinance and you can uh, keep uh, the Fuller Brush man from coming to your door unless they probably modified the ordinance where you know you have to go to the city hall and if you're a salesman you know get a permit or, or something. But for political and religious and uh, First Amendment, you can't forbid, you know, so okay. We've covered that, right? You see where this is going? 
maybe you don't. So my daughter uh, took her crew out to Overland Park, Kansas, and she, again, let me stress that there's nobody less threatening looking. Uh, I mean, my God, she's a vegetarian. How, how can, you know, a vegetarian can't be, they can't be threatening, can they? Uh, so she goes up to this house, nice house, nice neighborhood, goes up to it, knocks on the door, and a lady comes to the door, and she, LaDonna says, uh, you know, I'm with Greenpeace, I'd like to talk to you about it. Uh, lady says, uh, not interested. And uh, LaDonna says, uh, oh, okay, thank you very much, sorry to have bothered you. Exits, starts walking down this, she's on the sidewalk, the city sidewalk, walking down the street, and a car pulls into the house that she just left, into the driveway. Man gets out and goes up to his wife, and uh, he asks his wife, who was that girl at the door? And his wife says, uh, uh, somebody from Greenpeace, she's from Greenpeace or whatever. And he goes down there and hollers, stop and goes down to LaDonna and he says, what were you doing at, you know, at my house there? And LaDonna says, oh, I'm with, you know, I'm with Greenpeace, has, you know, she has an ID, I'm with Greenpeace and uh, wanted to, we're going on talking to people here and, and he says, oh, you can't do that, it's against the law, I'm tired of you, and they, I'm tired of you hippies, you hippies, uh, and he goes on, he's going on like that, just tired of you liberal hippies, you know, who do you think you are, and you're under arrest. And, you're, and so, so he calls for a district car to come. Turns out he's a, I forget, he was a high-ranking Overland Park police officer. I think he was higher than a captain, a major or a colonel or something. And so the... Uh, I think two officers showed up. I'm not sure if they were doing two-man cars or if one came and another. If I remember correct, LaDonna said that two officers showed up. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I think it was two officers. They show up and, of course, they know him, you know. He's, I'm not sure what his, what division he was in, whether it was detectives or patrol or exactly, but he was their commanding officer probably, you know, he outranked them, that's for sure. They're driving a patrol car, and he's in a suit, and he doesn't drive a patrol car. Um, so he says, "I want, I want her arrested. You know, to take her. You know, book her for you know violation of the Green River Ordinance." And according to Ladonna, the officers were like, uh, you, "You know, you you want her? You want this girl here arrested for you know?" Yes. Him, take her, book her, you know. So they uh, can't remember if they handcuffed her or not. I mean, it, it, they may have a, you know, they might have a policy that everybody who's, you know. Anyway, they took her to the Overland Park Police Department. So she's sitting there, and again, can I, I just can't stress enough. I think anybody, you, you look at her and, wow, there's a nice, you know, nice young lady. Uh, so officers are going by and, and uh, are saying, what, what's, uh, what's with this girl over here, you know? And the other, the other, the officers there or whatever, let's say his name is Smith. Let's say I'm going to make him a colonel. So they say, Colonel Smith wants her arrested for going door to door soliciting for Greenpeace. And the other officers go, oh, wow, okay, yeah, Colonel Smith, okay. So they fingerprint her, photograph her, uh, whatever. 
Then it was kind of strange. I don't know what the situation was. They, I don't know whether Colonel Smith, I think, he had her, uh, transported to the Johnson County Sheriff's Department lockup. I mean, they have cells at the Overland Park Police Department. Uh, they knew that she had called her father and that I was responding right away, but they transferred her to, out to, I think that was in uh, Olathe, I believe. Anyway, they transferred her. So anyway, I, so anyway, I uh, come home from uh, patrolling for the Raymore Police Department and uh, come in uh, my grown son was living with me and he was working at Taco Bell and he was to get home about 5 a.m. and this was about 8 p.m. or something. I must have worked the day shift for Raymore PD but anyway I came home. I might be a little bit off on these times but I came, came home and of course he was at work and he was going to be, my son was going to be at work until 5, 5 a.m. I came in the door and uh, the phone rang and it was LaDonna saying that she'd been arrested and that she was at uh, the Overland Park Police Department. And I said, I'll be right there. And so I got out of my uniform and I put my gun in my room. I did not... Uh, unload it. I did not uh, lock it up. I was in a hurry. For the first time, I didn't do that. So I jumped in my car, headed out there, and then I found out that they had transferred her to the uh, county jail. And so I went out there and uh, bailed her out. And as soon as she told me what happened, I said, hey, they can't arrest, and I think she knew it too, they can't arrest you, for, you know, for that. That's a constitution, you know, that's, that's been to United States Supreme Court. You can, political purposes, you can go door to door. No city or county, they can pass a Green River Ordinance, but they can't enforce it against uh, something like this. And uh, so I took her, I took her home, to her home. Then I went home and I think it was by that time, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night or midnight or something. And my son was home. He left work early. And uh, I really don't want to go into much more, but me leaving my gun at home was not, my, me leaving my gun unsecure like that was not a good idea. And it was a really bad time for that to happen. And things could have been really could have been a really bad situation. So let's leave that subject. Um, now, Greenpeace told my daughter, uh, "Just plead guilty, and we'll pay the you know we'll pay the fine." I told my daughter, I said, "Hell no, Greenpeace needs to you know." 
they need to fight this. This is a constitutional issue or whatever, she says. Uh, they said that uh, just plead guilty, they'd pay, they'd pay the money. And I said, I'll call, I'm going to call the ACLU. Anyway, their, their page sucks, by the way. Uh, American Civil Liberties Union. So I called them and explained the situation. They said, we'll take the case. You know, no, no charge, no cost. We'll take the case. This has been before the United States Supreme Court. The city of Overland Park, Kansas, cannot do this. They violated, you know, the Constitution of the United States. We'll take the case. And anyway, the Greenpeace told my daughter, no, no, we're not getting involved in this. You plead guilty and we'll pay the, you know, we'll pay the, we will pay the fee. So, fuck the Greenpeace. By the way, later on, not because of this or anything, Greenpeace did away. Well, anyway, my daughter went on to uh, New Haven, Connecticut, and ran the Greenpeace office out there. Then she went to California for me. She ran the, I'm not sure if it was Los Angeles. I think it was Los Angeles. And maybe for Los Angeles, maybe they had two offices. I don't know, but she ran the, she was in charge of the uh, Greenpeace office out there. And then Greenpeace uh, did away with having people go door to door and they just collect money, you know, online or in magazine ads or something like that. Uh, so fuck Greenpeace. But I would, I, that, that police officer, man, that's to, He, has to, he, would, he had to be a, a fucking idiot. Well, I think he knew it was just, I think he knew it was like, he would, how could you be a ranking officer? How could you be any officer? As, well, if you were an officer in some other city that didn't have the Green River Ordinance, yeah, maybe you wouldn't know that that had been adjudicated all the way to the United States Supreme Court and that you couldn't arrest uh, people for going door to door. So, um, that's my story. I wish I'd have followed, it would have been nice to, <clears throat> but I'm not really confrontational. I mean, I, I like to solve problems and then I, I want the thing over with. I guess that's the reason. That thing, as far as I'm concerned, wasn't uh, wasn't solved. I solved a lot when I was working. I solved a lot of problems. There were things that I fixed, not with the but with hospital security. There were things that I fixed and problems that I solved and injustices that I corrected. With contract security there's not much you can <laughs> not much you can do except when you're doing your assignment not do something that's that's wrong but so far as with the companies my god. Anyway that's my that's my story uh, one of the things, of course, is the fact that, you know, there for 30 years I always secured my weapon, and the one time that I didn't, it could have been unbelievably tragic. Something that I I would not have been you know, I wouldn't have been able to recover from uh, something like that. And one stupid asshole uh, 
I mean, I would have been the one who didn't lock up my weapon and secure that weapon, but, uh, and you can't blame, <clears throat> you can't go, there's certain, I mean, you can't go, but still, you know, I just came in the door and the phone rang and my daughter was arrested the first time in, the first time in her life. She's been, she was arrested after that. Uh, she was arrested uh, outside the nuclear testing facilities and where is it, New Mexico or Arizona for blocking the entrance to it, uh, to their nuclear testing facility. She's protested and uh, but uh, still, I I would just like to have. I should have like. But I want. I don't like to keep. I like the end of things. And but I'd kind of like to know that some. I wish that. I wish that I had maybe. I wish I could just have found out that. Uh, that ranking Overland Park police officer did something like that again and was demoted or fired or said something happened to him or that he or that he retired and decided to run for some political office and lost you know crushingly because of his arrogance and stupidity uh, by the way, I was working at Research Medical Center in, uh, I worked at a number of hospitals, but I was working there and at that time, the first hospital I worked at was in the worst part of Kansas City, Missouri at that time. At, well, out of 10 security officers there, we had two shot in the line of duty. And then uh, <clears throat> years later, that was the third hospital that I worked at, Research Medical Center. I was working there. And I worked there a couple times. I worked there for five years, and then went to another hospital for 10, and then came back there for more time there. But so by that time, the crime, the worst area was right around Research Medical Center. And there was a, an Overland Park, by the way. Overland Park is. A wealthy area. It's in Kansas, right next to Kansas City, Missouri. It's a wealthy area, although there are people of modest means, and there are people probably, I'm sure, there that uh, are like me, poor. Uh, but it's Johnson County, and they kind of, you know, I live in Johnson County. Uh, all the hospitals that I worked at, and uh, all the directors of security for the hospitals, and there was like, I don't know, 15 hospitals. I think every one of them lived in Johnson, in Overland Park. Uh, the hospital administrators <laughs> lived in Overland Park. Now there are other nice areas. There's some nice areas in Kansas City, Missouri. And, uh, but they all lived there, and it was like, I live in Johnson County, you know. I live, well, when I was working at the Oak Park Mall Shopping Center, which I told you about, and that would have been about 1975. I don't have it here anymore. That's when I was before they sent me outside <laughs> to work in a parking lot. Uh, let me take these people's page off uh, so you make sure you don't send them any money. Um, I was making my rounds and it was a Saturday or Sunday and it was early, probably a Sunday and it was early. And there weren't very many people at the mall right then. Uh, it, was, it would be get busy later because that's a nice shopping mall. But I was standing there at one of the entrances just where I could look out into the parking lot because there wasn't, uh, at, at that time, the, the uh, I guess the police didn't either weren't working period there or they came in later when it was busy or something. 
but I'm standing there and a guy comes out of the jewelry store that worked there. Uh, I think he was the owner of the jewelry store actually. Uh, but he came out and he, how's everything going, you know, comes up next to me and how's everything going? I said, oh, okay, it's quiet. He says, yep, uh, not very many people here from Missouri today. I said, yeah, not, yep. And so then he went back on in. And so I'm standing there and I'm thinking, well, how does he know there's not uh, many people here from Missouri today? Uh, he hasn't been out in the parking. I mean, he came in to open his business up. The parking lot was empty, you know, pretty much empty because employees were coming in. Uh, he hasn't gone out. He can't see very much from here. You can't see all the tags on their cars or whatever. How does he know? And then I saw some shoppers coming, black. That's, that's what he meant. There weren't very many black people from Missouri over in Overland Park, Kansas. So that's my story. End of story time. Oh, no, no, no. Um, my uh, daughter, my oldest daughter, the one that I was telling you about here, uh, when Greenpeace shut down all their offices, she went to work for a publishing company for a short period of time. And then she was hired by the uh, by a labor union, and she still works as a union organizer for the for the union uh, in Washington D.C. Thank you very much for watching.